What is the difference between use callback and use memo? In this video, you're going to learn exactly what the difference is and when you need to use which. Hi, I'm Jan, I'm the CTO of React Squad, and if you need to hire your next React developer, click the link below the video to check out reactsquad.io. Without further ado, let's jump into the topic of the video. So the React docs say that use callback returns a memoized function, while use memo returns a memoized value. In other words, Use callback gives you referential equality between renders for functions, while use memo gives you referential equality between renders for values. And both use callback and use memo take in a function and a dependency array, but the difference is that use callback returns its function, while use memo calls its function and then returns the result. If that all went over your head, don't worry, we're gonna look into it in the following chapters. So the first thing that you need to understand to understand use callback and use memo is first class functions. First class functions means that in JavaScript, you can assign functions to values. And that is the same as just assigning a string to a value or a number to a value, right? And then you can have a function declaration, but you can also assign that function to a variable using a named expression. And it can also be an arrow function that you assign to the variable. And if you call all of these things, you can see that even the functions that were saved into variables, they still work. So what do you get from the ability to store functions as values in JavaScript? Well, you can pass in functions as arguments to other functions. You can also return functions from functions as the final result. And you can store functions as values for an object's keys. Or you can store functions as values in an array. And you can even store functions as keys for the map object. And what do you call a function that takes in a function or returns a function? You call those functions higher order functions. So let's look at an example. Define a function called identity that just returns whatever you put in. And now when you put in the foo function from above, this function called on the foo function behaves the exact same way as the foo function from above because you're using the identity function as a higher order function and it only becomes a higher order function due to the fact that the thing that it returns is now a function, right? Because you pass in foo, foo is a function, now calling identity of foo and then calling the result of that is also a function. The next concept that you need to understand to understand use callback and use memo is referential equality. So there are two types of equality comparison operators in JavaScript. You have the strict equality comparison and you have the abstract equality comparison. Referential equality works using the strict equality comparison, which is true if you have two operands that are of the same type, they're both primitives and they have the same content. You can define many variables and then just use the strict equality comparison operator on them to see how it behaves. Let's do that now. Let's say you have a variable called greeting and you assign the string hello to it and another function called other greeting that you also assign the string hello to it. And then you can define the same function foo in five different ways. First, you just define the function foo just like we did it above. Then you define the same function again, but this time we assign it to the variable other foo and the function declaration is actually anonymous. Let's also define it as an error function for good measure with the same behavior. Then we define the function the exact same way again, we just give it a different name. And lastly, we assign the original foo function to a variable called foo reference. Now you can start and compare those different values. First, if you have the hello string just compared to the other raw hello string, you see that the equality comparison returns true. If you compare the greeting to the other greeting, it also returns true. And knowing the definition of referential equality that I gave you before, this should make sense to you, right? Because both are of the same type, they're both primitives and they both have the same content, which is just the string hello. Now let's look at the comparison between all of those functions. What is happening there? Well, if you compare foo with itself, that just returns true. If you compare foo with other foo, that returns false. If you compare foo to another foo, that also returns false. And if you compare foo to same foo, that also returns false. It should make intuitive sense to you that comparing foo to its reference is true. But why is the comparison between same foo and foo false, even though the comparison between other greeting and greeting returns true. Well, that is because comparing two distinct objects in JavaScript with both the abstract equality comparison as well as the strict equality comparison always returns false unless the object references the same object. 
And since functions are objects in JavaScript, that means that same foo and foo are not strictly equal. So what does it mean when you memeize a function? Well, memeizing a function means that for every permutation of arguments, you only calculate the value, the result of the function, once. So let's say you get a certain set of arguments, right? Then you calculate the result and you save it somewhere. And now the next time you call that function with the same arguments, you retrieve that result so you don't need to calculate the function again and just return that saved result. Obviously, this only works with pure functions, right? Because pure functions, by definition, given the same input, always return the same output, right? Given the same arguments, they return the same result. And if you have a function that, for example, returns the current date or deals with random values, then the result changes on every subsequent function call and therefore you cannot memoize it. Here's what a simple implementation of a memoize function looks like. You basically take a cache, right, and you save the value whenever you call the function for the first time. And then on subsequent calls, if you already have a value for the given arguments, then you just return the previous result. And that's what it means to memoize a function. Now check out the API of both functions. Use callback and use memo both take in a function and a dependency array, but the difference is that use callback just returns its function uncalled, while use memo calls its function and then returns the result. Check out this example. We first define the function foo and then we save it both with use callback and with use memo. So when you then print out the memoized callback, you get back the full function. While when you print out the memoized result, you just get bar. That is because use memo calls its function while use callback just returns the function uncalled. That also means that when you try to call the memoized callback, that works and returns the string bar, while trying to call the memoized result blows up because you cannot call a string. Now the example that you just saw is completely meaningless because in the real world you would never have an empty dependency array for either use callback or use memo because if you leave the dependency array empty that means the value never gets recomputed. So that means you could have just defined the function outside of your React component in the case of use callback or the value outside of your React component in the case of use memo and just use those. Therefore in the real world you will see something that looks more like this. Now in the real world you wouldn't just pass the function into use callback or use memo. Instead, use callback would define an inline function that would then use the function that uses the values of the dependency array. And use memo takes in a create function that takes some function and returns its result. So why do you have two hooks dedicated to memoizing values? You want to use use callback and use memo whenever you need referential equality between renders. That could be for example because you're using use effect or react.memo or even should component update from react.pure component. Here's an example that shows you why it's useful to get referential equality between renders. Let's say you have a component that takes in a user ID and then fetches and displays the user's data. We save the user's name and email in a useState hook, then we define a fetch user function and call it in a use effect array to fetch the user, and lastly we are going to display the data in some JSX. There's actually a mistake here. Can you spot the mistake? Actually, if you have the ESLint plugin React hooks installed, it will yell at you and it will ask you to put the fetch user function into the dependency array of the use effect. Because right now, we're only fetching the user once and when the user ID updates, we're never fetching a new user. But if you follow that plugin and just add the fetch user function into the array, you actually get an infinite loop. Because fetch user sets a user into state. And setting something in state will cause a re-render, which will cause a new fetch user function to be generated. And then, because comparing two distinct functions with a strict equality comparison operator always returns false, the use effect will actually run again, fetching a new user, triggering a new state update, and so on, and so on. Actually, there are two ways to solve this problem now. The most elegant one would admittedly be to just put the fetch user function into the user effect, put the user ID into the dependency array and now you only fetch a new user when the user ID changes. But this is a video about use callback and use memo. So let's look at how we can solve the problem using those functions instead. You can define fetch user using use callback and put the user ID into the dependency array of use callback. And now fetch user only gets updated when the user ID changes. And now it's totally safe to use fetch user inside of use effect and also to put fetch user 
inside of the dependency area of the use effect. And lastly, let's say you want to filter all users and display the result in a list. For that, we're going to use some functional programming magic. Let's define a function called filter that is curried and takes in a predicate and then an array and then filters the array based on the predicate. And now let's define a function called prop that takes in an object and then a key and then returns the value for that key from that object. We can partially apply that function to get a function that gets the name of any object. Next, we define a function that checks whether a string includes a substring. ToLower is a function that takes in a string and lowercases all of the characters in that string. Lastly, let's define a function called pipe that can compose any amount of functions in reverse mathematical order. And we can use them all to create a function called NameIncludes that takes in a list of users and filters all of the users that include the query in their name. Now, if you just use that function inline in a component, that's actually terribly inefficient because it will recompute every time the component re-renders. So to prevent that from happening, you can use useMemo to memoize the result and now you only recompute the filtering of the users list if your query string changes. If you learned something, subscribe now.